What up, yo? It's Matt, the Notre Dame fan, the Irish whiskey drinker, and I am here to talk about week seven of the college football season, another game for Notre Dame football coming off three straight victories, and tonight in South Bend, we play the Stanford Cardinal, um, who is a decent rivalry for Notre Dame. Um, I'm not going to go out and say, you know, uh, it, well... It is one of their top rivalries. They have played um, almost every year since 1988. Um, so it's at 34 years, roughly, um, with the exceptions of 1995, 96, and the COVID year of 2020, um, when each um, conference in college football only played conference games that year. So Notre Dame and Stanford could not play. So uh, every year but three since 1988. Um, prior to that, they met for the very first time in the 1925 Rose Bowl, which Notre Dame won. Um, and I think over the next 60-something years, they may have only played two or three times um, after that first Rose Bowl. So really, a majority of this rivalry is from 1988 and on. Um, that first Rose Bowl game featured two of the greatest head coaches of all time in all of football with uh, Pop Warner for Stanford and Newt Rockman for Notre Dame. Uh, they are on my personal Mount Rushmore college football, uh, not just college football, football head coaches. Um, you got to remember college football was around before the NFL. So Pop Warner, Newt Rockney, two of the best to ever do it. Um, I believe Notre Dame holds a 22 to 13 edge over Stanford in their history, 23, 13, something like that. But, but if you think about it, so Stanford has 13 wins against the Irish, um, all of them coming since 1988. When you break it down, you look at the winningest head coaches for Notre Dame, Brian Kelly being number one with like 112 or 113 wins um, and no national championships. But anyway, uh, followed by Newt Rockne with 105 wins and Lou Holtz with 100 wins. So Brian Kelly being the the, the winningest coach for uh, Notre Dame. Stanford has 13 wins against Notre Dame. Six of them came in the Brian Kelly era. So if you think about the winningest football coach in Notre Dame history, almost half of Stanford's wins against Notre Dame of all time have come against Brian Kelly. Let that sink in for a little bit. <laughs> um, Stanford is not the Stanford we're used to. Um, under David Shaw, uh, the Cardinal head coach, they had at least nine wins um, his first eight years there. And I believe of those first eight years, five of those eight were double-digit 10, 11 win seasons. Um, the past four years, Stanford has not been the Stanford we're used to. Um, they're one and four this year. Um, but but don't, don't let that skew this Notre Dame Stanford game. Despite the record, this team in traditional Stanford fashion will run the ball. And Tanner McKee, the Stanford quarterback, this, this guy has dogs that will catch the ball. He's got three or four freaking long receivers and a, and a stellar tight end man that can just catch the ball. Um, and if, if the Notre Dame secondary is not careful, um, the Stanford offense can light up this Notre Dame secondary. The reason for Stanford's one and four start though is the turnovers. Uh, 13, ton 13 turnovers in five games. Notre Dame must take advantage of that. They must create a few turnovers, um, control the ball. Same thing I said last week. Um, I mean, again, every team says the same thing, right? For Notre Dame, they're going to be without one of their defensive captains. Well, one of their team captains, um, Bo Bauer, out for the season. He's a fifth-year senior, and um, tonight it will break his 52-game um, play streak. He's played in 52 straight games, um, which I think is only second to all time. I, honestly, I can't remember who holds the record uh, for most games played in Notre Dame. It's, it's someone recently, damn it, I can't. Bad, bad on me. I can't remember. Um, but 50, I, I, it's devastating. A devastating loss. I feel so bad for the kid. My, my daughter, Bo Bauer, is one of her favorite players. He's just got that long, 
curly blonde hair. She loves him. Um, and, and it's a devastating loss, not because he lights up the uh, stat sheet, but because of his energy and his leadership. There's a reason why he wears that C on his chest. Um, he's a captain, like I said. Uh, Notre Dame, I think, coming in this game right now, I believe it's up to 16.5 point favorite. God, it seems like a lot considering the way this Notre Dame team has played. Um, <laughs> even though they're winning and they're they're getting off to really good starts, but man, these fourth quarters are killing Notre Dame. It's it's like they let the the gas off the pedal. Um, they look these teams, North Carolina, um, a couple weeks ago. Um, we don't want these teams back in it, and it's just can't go. We we gotta keep keep the pressure on foot to the pedal. But anyway. Notre Dame stand for tonight in South Bend. So let's get to the task at hand. So the Irish whiskey I chose today is Grey Coast Irish whiskey. Um, I chose Grey Coast. Stanford University is on the west coast. Um, they're kind of down, so there's a dark cloud over them. I just thought I'd tie it in with some Grey Coast. Why not? Grey Coast um, is a collaboration between um, professional golfer Graham McDow McDowell, who is from Northern Ireland, and uh, Bowen Distillery. Uh, Bowen Distillery is, they, they make a line of whiskeys called the Whistler, which I happen to freaking love. I love the lineup of the Whistler. I have had uh, PX I Love You, Oloroso, um, the uh, stout cask. Um, I've, I've had, I think I've had five of theirs, maybe even six of their uh, ranges from the Whistler, and I absolutely love them. So Bowen, Dist Bowen Distillery is doing something good out there. So I figure, why not try something they, they collaborate with? Um, so Great Coast Whiskey, um, Bowen Distilleries in County Neath, uh, which is in Northern Ireland. Um, so this was meticulously. Uh, crafted using some first fill um, bourbon casks um, and some virgin American oak casks, both with single grain Irish whiskey. Uh, it also uses um, some virgin oak American casks with single malt Irish whiskey and, uh, and some um, Oloroso sherry casks also with single malt Irish whiskey. Um, so I have not had this one yet. I just poured this little dram uh, a little bit ago before I started this video. Um, so I bought this one, uh, 33, 34 bucks, something like that, 36. Um, I'm looking at the bottle. The bottle's really cool. I like this bottle. It's only, if you notice, it's only 700 mLs. Um, most of your standard uh, whiskey bottles here in the States are 750 milliliters, so it's a little short, but anyway. Um, Whatever this bottle is laminated with, if this is all, if this is not labeling or anything, um, it's really cool. Um, I, I don't know how else to describe it, but I think the bottle is very attractive. I like the old school uh, Celtic lettering on it. So here we go. Slotcha. You know, there's no single pot still in this blend. Like I said, it's um, single single grain and single malt Irish whiskeys. But um, I give it a swirl or two. It does hug the glass and it's a little leggy, a little leggy. I like that. Um, and it's got this golden honey, this deep honey color to it. Very gorgeous liquid. Getting a lot of vanilla, honey, and syrup. Most likely, those are coming from the first um, first fill bourbon casks. Getting some uh, subtle notes of dried figs, um, maybe dried raisins. Pleasant, pleasant nose. Honey and honey and vanilla, they're very prominent, even on the palate. Little creaminess too. I'm surprised, being there's no single pot still in here. A uh, little creamy. This is a 40% ABV, by the way. Um, give me some almonds and some 
some herbal notes. Kind of like rosemary, maybe. Man, this is good. A little citrusy. There's some citrus on the back end of that. That just came out of nowhere. Mmm. Those dried figs are there in the beginning of that finish, but they they fade quickly, man. And that vanilla and honey come back again, pronounced from nose to finish. That vanilla and honey. Um, you figure with that first fill of bourbon casks that they'd be there, and boy, are they strong. Um, this this is pretty good um, for the price. I like this one a lot, and um, you know, having having Bowen Distillery in there. Uh, collaborating with Graham. I, I expected a good whiskey, and, and it is. It really is a good whiskey. Um, the store I got this from had 8, 10, 12 bottles in stock. Um, I will go pick another one up because I know this is uh, this is not a core range of any stretch of the imagination, so this is going to be some kind of um, limited edition or whatever. It's not going to be out forever, so I'm going to have to go pick another bottle of this up. This is... um. This is very good, neat, just like this. Um, very pleasant nose, great on the palate, and a, and a pretty freaking decent, decent finish. Um, the finish doesn't last long, but I mean, it just tastes good. Um, so I'm pretty happy with Great Coast. So that's what I got for you today. And as always, go Irish.